Hey guys, Rusty here, and I'm going to be showing you how you can have an awful time playing World of Warcraft. I'm going to be showing you how you can solo normal and heroic old deer. Now, jokes aside, the first six bosses are actually pretty easy and should be doable by anyone with even slightly average gear. Should be no problem at all. It's when you get over to Mithrax and Gahoon that you're, honestly, you might want to uninstall the game. Now, of course, I will leave timestamps in the video for you guys if you want to skip around the specific bosses, if you want to skip the Heart of Azeroth section, although that will become important for Gahoon later on. Point being, skip around the video, go to what you want to see. And I do want to mention before the YouTube comments decide to point it out, a lot of the work for this video was done before the Dragonflight pre-patch. However, I did go back and test it out and everything you see in here is still relevant. So that being said, let's get started. So before I get into the actual solo guide, I do want to talk about the Heart of Azeroth. If you played Battle for Azeroth, first of all, I'm sorry. Second of all, if you have the Heart of Azeroth and its essence is unlocked, you can actually still use it in the old raids and it does help you out. However, it's not really a requirement until we get over to Gahoon. We'll talk about about that more later. Now for the essences that I use, I use Blood of the Enemy as my major, Vision Perfection, Memory to Lucid Dream, and I believe Unbound Force as my miners. Since they give percent gains instead of flat stat gains, they will help you out in the raid. So again, not required for about the first seven bosses, but it definitely does help. So once you're all set, you could head over to the zone of Nazmir, and in the center of the zone, there's gonna be a giant triangle. Guess what? That's the raid. That's where it is located. I will, of course, show you where it is in the video. Head over there and set the raid to either normal or heroic, whichever difficulty you're doing it on, and head on in, and we're gonna start it off with the first boss, Talok, who will become attackable once you kill his two phallic-looking tentacles. So Talok is, I'm gonna be honest, guys, he's a joke. If you're super geared, just go in there and kill him. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, but he, he is very easy to do. Anyway, start off with phase one. He's basically just gonna start putting pools on the ground and send a bunch of balls at you that knock you back. Honestly, it's very simple. Don't stand in the pools. You can clear them if you want. He'll eventually just throw his hammer at you and that'll clear the pools of blood on the ground, but it's really unnecessary. You won't be in that phase for that long. And eventually he will just walk over to the center of the elevator, which by the way, it is an elevator, and he will become immune to damage as the elevator starts going down. Now, honestly, this point in the fight is really the only way you could die. There's gonna be two adds that could spawn. Coalescing bloods do need to be killed off. They will just spawn pools of blood on their location. Not much you can do about that. Just don't stand in the pools and killing them. The ones you have to look out for are the, are the volatile droplets. Now these will just fixate on you and if they reach you, if they actually hit you, there is a chance you can get knocked back. And of course you can get knocked off the platform and you will die. So two ways you can handle this one, don't get knocked back off the platform, position yourself in a way you don't get knocked off. So once they touch you, they, they, they despawn, they die. Or you could just kill them off because they have like two HP. That, I mean, that's honestly the only way you could really die. There is one other thing on the elevator. If you look over the edges, you will see these yellow beams. If you're doing this on a super, super undergeared character and you get hit by the beams, they can still kill you. They do still do a lot of damage. However, if you're super geared, it's not going to be an issue at all. You can honestly just ignore them. And of course, once the elevator reaches the bottom, it's exactly like phase one again, except you'll have the volatile droplet spawning. However, they're a non-issue because you can't get knocked off the platform at that point. So just go in there, finish the boss off. You're done. Let's move on. So after you finish Talok, literally go straight and activate the Titan console. And this will spawn three trash packs around the room. Kill all three trash packs and that will open the door to the next boss, Mother. Now this boss is also another complete joke and its main mechanic revolves around the cleansing rooms, the chambers. Now if you look over to the right on my screen on my unit frames, so it'll be chamber one, chamber two, and those have an energy bar. Once you're in the chamber, that energy bar will slowly fill up. And once it reaches 100, guess what? You instantly die. That is your enrage on this fight. However, even if you're doing this on an undergeared character for a specific piece of transmog, you should really never meet that. Essentially what you want to do, wait in the chamber until it's about to fill up with energy. Then you move to the next one. Same thing with that one. Then you move into the final one. Now here's where it gets a little interesting. If you are super geared, guess what? Just bring the boss all the way to the final chamber. And while this does put you on a shorter timer, because again, you have to kill the boss before the, uh, the room kills you. Once the boss is in the final room, she actually takes 100% increased damage. Now, you're going to have to use your own discretion. This is up to your own discretion. If you want to start taking your time, going from chamber to chamber, or if you just want to drag the boss, if you have enough gear, all the way to the final room and just burn her down. As again, she does take 100% increased damage. 
Now that's the main mechanic of the fight guys, essentially kill the boss before you get burned to death. However, again, if you are doing this on an undergeared character, you do want to keep an eye out for the swirlies on the ground, don't stand in them. When she does cleansing strike, just move out of the way of it, it does apply a stacking debuff to you that does increase your damage taken by it, so just make sure you move. She'll suck you into a wall of fire, don't get sucked into the wall of fire, kill the adds, and besides that, the only other thing is is there's gonna be these beams around the room. There's gonna be a gap in there. Just stand in the gap so the beams don't go over you. Again, all those other mechanics though, guys, are really just for undergeared characters. If you're super overgeared, just drag the boss into the last chamber since she does take that 100% increased damage, double damage, and just kill her. Mother is a very easy boss. Let's move on. So the next three bosses can actually be done in any order. However, we're gonna go to the right first. We're gonna head over to the Gallery of Failures and in there you will find the Fetid Devourer boss, Warlords of Draenor, as well as most of my life. Now this boss, guys, is a complete joke. If you're geared enough, just go in there and kill it. Boom, you're done, move on. Anyway, so for real, the main mechanic of this fight is that there are two adds that spawn around the room that spawn out of the shoots. They literally crap them out and those adds will do a cast. They're basically enticing the boss to come over and eat it. If they finish, the boss will heal for 20% total, 10% for each ad. Guys, if that happens, not a big deal. Now, ideally, you kill the ads to prevent that from happening. If he does, though, 20%, while well, it seems like a lot, it, it's really not. The boss dies very quick, and once he reaches 50% HP, he will actually take 50% increased damage taken. He will also do 25% more damage. However, guys, this boss does melt. Now, that being said, it is still a bit of a gear check since he does still do a fair bit of damage. He melees pretty hard. That circle, the dot he puts on you, does deal a lot of damage. So if you are struggling with this boss, I'm going to be honest, it's it's a gear issue. Get more gear. That's There's nothing much you can do about that. This boss is a complete gear check. If you're struggling, get more gear. Besides that, don't stand in his frontal cone, his spit that he does at you, and he also does do a knockback. You can actually use that to get knocked towards the ads if you want. I just want to reiterate one more time, guys. If he does end up eating the ads, not a huge deal. Just pop all your cooldowns, potions, lust on pull, nuke him down, and once he's at 50%, he's that per, that once he hits 50%, even if he heals back up to full, he still takes that increased damage taken. So guys, again, this fight is a complete joke. Just go in there, kill it. Let's move on to Vectus. So for Vectus, you're going to want to head over to the Plague Vault where he's located, which is the northern part of Oldir. And after you clear all the trash in the room, the boss will spawn. Now this boss is a complete gear check, guys, just like Fetid Devour. However, this one is a slightly harder gear check than the Fetid Devour. So if you're struggling here, again, you need to get more gear. There's nothing to do about it. Get more gear. This boss is a complete gear check point. The reason why is he will essentially put a dot on you that as the fight goes on, will leave another debuff on you that will in just increase your damage taken up and up and up and up until it eventually just one shots you. There's a gear check. There's your DPS race. You need to kill the boss before this dot kills you. Now, in phase one, he doesn't do much. Again, he just puts that dot on you. That does a lot of damage. You need the gear in order to live through that, and also the self-sustain in order to live through that. Now, besides that, he will spawn an ad. Now, this ad is annoying, basically because as he's spawning it, he will stun you for five seconds before he does. I mean, the most annoying part about it is just the stun. That's five seconds. You're not going to be able to heal yourself or do damage to the boss. It's annoying. When the ad does spawn, he only does one thing. He does put a light absorb shield on you. Nothing you can do about it. Just heal through it. I do recommend just cleaving the ad down and putting all your damage into the boss. Because again, that dot will just slowly be killing you. Now, ideally, you kill the boss before he does reach phase two. If you take too long, he will eventually turn into a red pool of blood. First of all, don't stand in the pool. That will increase your stacks of the debuff, meaning more damage you take. Besides that, he's going to start throwing red lines on you. Avoid them, otherwise you get increased stacks of the debuff. He's also going to spawn these three circles around the room that, if they're not soaked, will explode, giving you more stacks. Obviously, since you're soloing, you can't soak them all. And by the way, they do also spawn an ad if they are not soaked. Not much you can do about that. Just kill the ads as they spawn, and you're just going to want to wait until the boss eventually respawns and then kill him. Again, ideally, you finish the fight before you ever reach that phase, as if you are dependent on leech. There's only the ads to leech off of, but they don't last very long. And again, it's just a lot more damage for you to try and heal yourself 
through. And that's pretty much it for this boss, guys. You just need the proper amount of gear in order to go in there and kill him. I can't give you a set item level, especially if you're watching this in the future. Just go in there and get enough gear until you're eventually able to kill the boss. That, that's it. It's literally a pass or fail boss. Go in there. Hopefully you have enough gear to kill it. Let's move on. So for Zek Fives, you're going to want to head over to the western area of the raid or to the, I believe it's called the Archive of Eternity. Just go to where I am on the map kill all the trash, and the boss will spawn. Now, Zekfaz is a very easy boss. However, there are a couple things that you do want to be aware of that can potentially kill you if you aren't aware of what they are. So, during the throughout the entire fight, the boss is going to do a tank combo. And one of the abilities in that combo is called Void Lash. He will do it twice per combo. And once he does, you will be immune to dam or not to damage, but immune to healing for, I think it's five or six seconds. Point being, it's a very short duration debuff, but you will be immune to healing yourself through it whether it's through leech or self heals, be aware that's a thing, pop some type of defensive cooldown, as soon as the debuff expires, make sure you heal yourself back up to full, or use some kind of absorb shield, sorry mages, I guess you can't heal yourself unless you have something I'm not aware about, because I don't play a mage, ha! Anyways, this fight, that's the main thing you do want to keep an eye out, Phase 1 and Phase 2 are pretty much a joke. In Phase 2, there will be ads that spawn. Uh, they don't really do much. Do avoid the, uh, stepping in the light blue pools if you can. It does spawn an ad. But if you do, again, if you do, it's, it doesn't really do much. Just cleave it down. If you are doing this with slightly less gear and you are taking a lot of damage, the mobs that are spamming Void Bolt, you can run around the room and focus them down if you are taking a bit too much damage from them. But otherwise, I generally recommend just cleaving them down. They don't really do much else. The only other thing to be aware of is that when the boss does reach phase 3, he will spawn this purple orb on the ground. Now, if you run into this orb, you'll gain a, uh, a debuff that when it does expire, you will be mind controlled and you wipe instantly. However, your damage and healing is also doubled. So, it, it, it is up to you and up to your own discretion what you want to do here. If you just want to not even risk it don't pick up the orbs just kill the boss they're not necessary however maybe you want to have a little fun maybe you want to do a little bit of extra damage maybe you want to challenge yourself give yourself a uh, dps check pick up the orb you'll gain uh, a debuff again you'll do double damage and kill the boss before the debuff expires or you'll die but there you go some choice for you this boss is a joke guys if you don't want to do any of the mechanics i mean just go in there don't pick up the orbs and you're done the boss will fall over uh, let's move on. So once you defeat the first five bosses of Oldir, pathways to the center of the raid will open up. Just head down one of those pathways and waiting there will be the boss that effectively got subtlety rogues deleted for the entirety of Battle for Azeroth, Zul. Now this might be a first for one of my solo guides, at least for raids, where I actually explain how to do trash because Zul trash right now is almost as bad right now as it was back when this raid was current. Now the Nazmani Dominators, the big boys, or big girls, are basically going to be padding around the area and they will reduce the damage taken of everything else including other Nazmani Dominators. So I recommend instead of just doing a gigantic AoE pull and having one of the worst times of your life, just pull those Dominators by themselves one at a time and kill them off. Zul Trash, man, it's still, it's still terrible right now. I hate it. Let's move on to the actual boss fight though. So Zul is another pretty massive gear check, probably the biggest one in the raid, depending on your class. However, that's only for the last 40% of the fight. Let's first start with the first 60%. In the first phase, there's two things you're going to want to be aware of. The first one is the adds. The only adds of really any importance are the blood hexers, the casters. When two of them are close to each other, they do start healing everything around them. So when the blood hexers are up, if there's two of them especially, I do actually recommend swapping, like hard swapping to them, burning them down. The other ads, however, they for the most part just melee you. They could just be cleaved down. I wouldn't worry about them too much. The boss will also put a debuff on you that actually does turn your screen purple. And when it expires, it's going to spawn these minions of Zul ads that have a giant absorb shield on them. There's one they they fixate on you, and if they reach you, they fear you. Now, there's a few ways you could deal with this. If you have any type of offensive magical dispel, consume magic for demon hunters, for example, purge for shamans, arcane torrent for all blood elves. If you can talent into that, you can actually use that on the adds and it'll purge the shield off. And it'll actually instantly kill them. That is the best way to handle it. If you don't have any of that available to you, I do recommend just kiting them around and then cleaving down their absorb shield until they eventually go away. Alternatively, you can just run into them and outweigh the duration of the fear. There's a few ways you can handle it. Ideally, though, you just purge it off. If not, kite it around. That's really only an issue in phase two, which we'll talk about now when you're actually trying to do damage. Now, what makes this fight a DPS check is that the second the boss hits 40% HP, that's what brings him into phase two, you have about 25 seconds to kill him as he will eventually debuff you with something called Death Wish. 
which is exactly what it says. You essentially want to kill yourself. Your character will walk to the edge, jump off, instantly killing you. You need to kill the boss before this happens. Now, I, obviously, I didn't test this out for myself. Do let me know in the comments down below if this is a thing. Paladins, mages, you might be able to immune this off. If you have anything that makes you immune to mind controls, that might work for this mechanic. Do let me know in the comments down below. However, if that stuff doesn't work and if you don't have that available to you, you have 25 seconds to kill the boss. So save all your DPS cooldowns, your potions, bloodlust. If you don't have bloodlust, definitely make sure you buy some drums off the auction house that will help massively. You need to kill the boss before he does put the death wish debuff on you. Now, if the minions of Zul adds do spawn during this, and they will spawn during this, um, purge them, dispel them if you can. If that's not available to you though, I recommend again, just kiting them around and absolutely putting all your damage into the boss. You have about 25 seconds to kill him before he sends you walking off the edge. There's your gear check. Let's move on. So once you kill Zul, just click on the Titan console and the floor will open up. You jump down into the hole and there is Mithrax. Now, before I actually get into Mithrax and later Gahoon, I'm going to tell you the best way to solo these two bosses right now. And that's to simply turn off this friggin' video and wait for Blizzard to nerf them. Guys, I mean, like, I'm only half joking when I say that, guys. Because as much as I would love the views, you're gonna be, your mental health will be in a much better state not trying to solo these two bosses, at least at the time of making this video. I, real quick, if Blizzard does change anything, I will leave a pinned comment down below, so do keep an eye out for that. In order to do these two bosses, especially with Mithrax, you do have to do stuff that is really annoying and will take you some time to actually get down properly so i'm gonna be honest guys i i actually do recommend waiting for blizzard to nerf these two bosses however if you want to solo them right now they are technically more of a Cahoon, technically possible to solo on all specs right now although especially when we get to Cahoon later on the more mobile you are the better mithrax is solvable by every single spec in the game although it is still just as annoying on every single spec in the game so with, with that out of the way that warning out of the way let's get into mithrax now before you even start mithrax you're going to want to make sure you have the add-on deadly boss mods installed or a add-on that shows you a boss timer at least use your own whatever you want but for this video i'm going to use dbm open up dbm and make sure the timer for oblivion sphere is checked off make sure that's activated that is the only timer you need for this fight it is very very important if you're going to try and solo this now the way this works is the oblivion spheres the boss will on a timer spawn these giant purple orbs on you that if you walk into them or such spawning them on you you will instantly be mind controlled and then the fight is over technically making the fight unsolable however there is a way around this now full credit to durandil Le hunt i hope i said that correctly hope i didn't butcher that name um i did not come up with this on my own i did watch a video of him soloing for all you hunters out there i will leave his video linked in the description down below if you want to check out how he does it especially on a hunter now, the, what you're going to want to do is pull the boss to where I do over to like this little tiny rock around the edge of the room. And you're going to want to jump on that rock. Now here, just make sure you're obviously DPSing the boss as there is a slight DPS check, slight one. We'll talk about that in a bit, but you're going to want to pay attention to your oblivion sphere timer. This is the important part. Once that timer, and there's a very precise jump you want to make. Once that timer reaches a bow, I did it around 0 0.8, 0 0.6 seconds. You're going to want to jump slightly up the little root here, that little growth. Basically do what I do in the video, or you can watch Duran, they'll do it in his video. And if you jump precisely at the right time, the orb will actually not spawn. Now, I'm sure you can instantly see why I recommend not doing this boss until Blizzard changes it. To get the proper timing down for this jump, it took me about an hour and a half to get consistently enough where I could kill the boss. Maybe I just suck, but you know what, guys? It was a bad time trying to figure this out. I still recommend just waiting until Blizzard changes it. However, if you want to give it a try, that's how you do it. Wait till about 0 0.6, 0 0.8 seconds on the timer. Jump slightly up the root, and the orb will not spawn. I do want to mention sometimes the orb can still spawn. You won't get mind controlled. This sometimes cannot be an issue however it, some most of the times it is because then you can't use that route again you'll instantly get mind control however you're going to want to keep doing this and you're going to want to dps the boss down to 66 percent now before we move on to the intermission the other thing you will notice that is important is that the boss will be applying a debuff on you with basically every ability he does 
that will reduce your maximum amount of HP. And the only way to remove stacks of that debuff is to run into the green orbs around the room. Point being, just make sure you're doing that whenever you're not getting ready to dodge an Oblivion Sphere. Make sure you're doing that, otherwise you'll eventually get to the point where you have 99 stacks and 1% max health, meaning you'll get one shot. Now, once the boss does reach 66% HP, he's going to run into the center of the room and he's going to start casting Zalziax, I think that's how you say it, Zalziax Awakening. Now, at the end of this cast, he will spawn another sphere on you, uh, one of those big purple spheres that mind controls you. So again, make sure you head to the rock when there's about, again, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 seconds left on the timer. You want to jump and avoid the orb. Now, the way the intermission works, and by the way, make sure you save all your DPS cooldowns for this point. There's going to be two ads that spawn on the left and right of the room. Immediately book it over to the ad that you're closest to and do as much damage to it as you can. I actually recommend using your DPS cooldowns here on this first ad because once they are close to each other, they will reduce the damage they take. And the only way to DPS them, just DPS the low health one. You can DPS through that damage reduction. It will obviously take a while, hence why I recommend saving your DPS cooldowns. Again, the quicker you get to that first add, the lower you can get before the second one comes close, making it take that reduced damage. Now, once you kill off both of those big adds, the boss will actually become attackable. So your goal is to ideally kill him before he can cast again. Now, that's not always the case. The biggest one you want to do at the very least is try and get him to 33% HP. If you get him below 33% and he finishes intermission, he'll immediately go into a second intermission. It's exactly the same. So let's say it does that. He'll run into the center, start casting Zalziax Awakening again. Once again, you go over to the rock, 0.6 seconds, 0.8 seconds left. You jump, you avoid the orb. You go, you kill the big ads, and then you kill the boss. Now, worst case scenario, let's say you can't get him to 33% HP. All that means is you guess what you got to repeat the fight again from phase one you go to the rock you avoid orbs and you just keep repeating that until the boss falls over the hardest part of the fight guys is getting the timing down and for the jump in order to avoid the orbs it's really scuffed it's really annoying the jump has to be basically at the perfect time otherwise you're going to bone yourself guys i really do recommend just waiting for blizzard to nerf or change this boss it is technically possible to solo but it's a bad time to try and learn However, if you want to do it for whatever strange reason, maybe just to make a YouTube video, there you go. Let's move on to Gahoon. Now, before you even start Gahoon, now you're actually going to want the Heart of Azeroth as well as the Ripple in Space Azerite Essence. So normally I wouldn't do this, but I am actually going to take time out of the video to explain how to do both of those things. Skip ahead in the timestamps if you like. The reason why this is important is as I believe, as far as I know, Havoc Demon Hunter is the only one that can solo Gahoon without it. Let me know in the comments down below if you managed to do it without this essence stuff. Anyways, let's start off with how you actually unlock the Heart of Azeroth. You're going to want to, first of all, complete the BFA intro questline and unlock Najatar. Knock out two birds and one stone here. For the Horde, it does start next to, basically right outside of, what's it called, Gromash Hold, right next to the War Chief's command board. Talk to the Herald. And it's very similar for the Alliance, right outside of the Auction House, next to the command board that sends you out in quest. You're going to have that Stormwind Guard there, who will give you the intro quest for Battle for Azeroth. Complete those quests until you eventually unlock another one, the Najatar intro quest. It is called Send the Fleet. For the Horde that's down by the Zondalar docks, you talk to Nathanos Blightcaller, complete the quest, send the fleet. For the Alliance that's over in Boralus Harbor, you're going to talk to Gen Greymane on the ship. Again, the quest is called Send the Fleet. You're going to want to keep completing that quest as well as the other introductory Najatar quest until about you get to the point where you unlock your base. And then Magni's going to show up with another quest, I know, a lot of quests, called A Dying World. Complete that, you will eventually unlock the Heart of Azeroth, and you will go back to Najatar. And guess what? You will receive, I know, hard, another quest, which is all about unlocking Azerite ess Essences. Do that once you unlock the Azerite Essences, you can head back over to Najatar, but make sure you have War Mode on. Once you're there, you're going to want to pick up, I know, get ready for this another quest i know basically it's a world pvp quest i'll show you where each one is located for you to kill 25 players of the enemy faction in najatar now obviously that's going to be an issue now because I, I mean unless you're on a super populated server chances are no one of the opposite faction is going to be playing war mode in najatar so what you're gonna have to do here get a friend get a guildmate 
post in trade chat and buy someone. Literally just have someone come out and let you kill them 25 times in order to unlock this Azerite Essence Ripple in Space, which you will need for a Gahoon. I know this is a lot of work, guys, but here's the thing. That's, again, why I recommended just waiting for Blizzard to nerf Gahoon instead of going through all this work if you don't already have the Ripple in Space Essence unlocked. It's annoying, but if you want to solo this boss, unless you're a Havoc Demon Hunter, you're going to need it. Let's move on to the actual boss fight. So the hardest part with Gahoon is going to be the orb run in phase one. If you manage to do that, congratulations, you finish the boss. Now, depending on your class and spec, this boss is either a fairly small gear check or a gigantic one. Meaning the more mobile you are, the less gear you need, the less mobile you are. Sorry, priests. Sorry, warlocks. Sorry, death knights. The less gear you're, or the more gear, sorry, you're going to need. So let's actually talk about the orb run since that's the most important part of this fight. Now, what's going to happen is the boss is going to spawn this yellow orb on either the left or the right of the upper platforms. He starts left, then he goes right, then he goes back left. You have to run the orb and deposit it three times in order to end the phase. So let's just go to the left one first. You go, you pick up the orb, and the second you pick up the orb, you're going to start gaining a stacking debuff. Once this hits five, your character will be completely immobilized. You can't use anything that propels you forward, any movement abilities, for example, Fell Rush, Ventral Street, Demon Hunters, uh, Heroic Leap, Charge, stuff like that. If you're as pre Shadowlands pre patch, I'm sure you'll see in some of the footage I was using Dora's Shadows. Once you're immobilized, you wouldn't be able to use stuff like that. Uh, I am not, sh I'm not sure if blinks work. Maybe Mages, Druids, let me know if Blinks do work. The Druids still have Blink. Anyways, Mages, let me know if Blinks do work in the comments down below. But as far as I know, guys, there is no class of spec that has an ability that once you're immobilized will let you move your character forward. Again, though, I could be wrong about that. Let me know in the comments down below. And if there is a thing, I will pin a comment. So do keep an eye out for that. Anyways, back on track. Once you hit five stacks, your character will be completely immobilized. And also, once you deposit the orb, by the way, you will gain a two-minute debuff that does prevent you from picking up another orb, so you would have to wait. Now, here is where the ripple in space comes in. Once you are immobilized, that Azerite Essence, ripple in space, you're actually still able to use that to actually get move your character forward. Now, here is the issue. It's a one minute debuff timer. So obviously if you're a less mobile class, I would just use Priest for example, What's going, what you would have to do is you'd pick up the orb, you'd run as far as you can, and then from there, you would have to wait one minute, slowly moving your character forward over and over and over again until eventually your character just basically, you leapfrog your character forward until he reaches the deposit point where you could eventually deposit the orb. Now, while this is happening, you're going to be taking a ton of damage, hence the gear check. You need enough gear in order to survive that damage and be able to heal yourself through it if you are a super immobile class relying solely on the Ripple and Space Azerite Essence. Hence why you see the more mobile classes need less gear because they're up there longer, they're taking less damage. And again, it is technically, with the Ripple and Space Azerite Essence, it is technically possible to do this on every single class and spec on the game. However, obviously, guys, I'm not going to lie. Havoc Demon Hunters, your Windwalker Monks, your Warriors, they're going to have a way easier time doing this. And honestly, guys, at the time of making this video, there probably isn't even a gear level for those lower mobility specs to actually do this on. Because chances are, you're going to be going so slow while you're doing this, the boss will hit that enrage timer. Of course, increasing the amount of damage you take. Hopefully, at some point in Dragonflight, there will be a gear level where those lower mobility specs can do this. Again, I always just always go back to Priest since they have the self-heals and they're really slow. Let's just use Priest, for example. A gear level where Priest can be able to heal themselves through the damage you take, through the enrage damage, while still slowly moving forward with that Ripple in Space Azerite Essence. I know it's a pain in the ass, hence why I recommend just waiting until Blizzard changes this. But right now, as far as I know, do let me know in the comments down below if you found another way this is the only way to go about running orbs. So the last thing to mention about orb running is that while you're up there, there's also going to be the cyst ads with the gray slow pools all around them. The way those things work is that every time you deal a tick of damage to them, it reduces the size of the gray patches. You leave them alone for a while, that gray patch will, it'll basically regrow. Now what you're gonna wanna do is basically, depending on your class and spec, go forward as far as you can, reduce as many of those green, or green, gray patches as you can before you go back and run the orb. Last thing to mention is that there, if you do apply a dot to them, that dot will keep ticking on them, reducing the size, uh, consistently reducing the size of the gray patches. Boomkins are going to basically have a really easy time reducing those. So, point being, reduce as much of those gray patches as you can, keep them as small as you can until you can, until you're ready to go and pick up the orb. 
let's actually start at the beginning of the fight and go from there. So now that you hopefully understand how orb running works, let's look at the fight from the beginning. So as soon as you start, there's going to be the dark young ad, the big ad. You're going to want to kill that off immediately because it does do a slight knock up, which while you're running orbs, that can screw you up. So obviously you don't want that happening. Kill it off immediately. It does also do another ability called dark bargain. You take one stack, you get a nice 25% damage and healing increase. That's great. Not necessary, but it's great. If you take two stacks, however, so two in a row, you get mind control. Don't get mind control. The other ad is going to be the eyeball ads, and they just spam cast torment, and that's going to be a major, um, the major source of your damage taken. Not much you can do about it right now. We'll talk about those a little bit later. So as soon as you kill off the Dark Young, head over to the left orb platform. It always starts on the left, then it goes right, then it goes back left. Pick up, clear as many of the cysts as you think you can, then go and pick up the orb and using whatever mobility abilities are given to your class or spec, go as far down the platform as you can until you're completely immobilized. From there, you're going to want to use the ripple in space as a right essence until you're eventually at the deposit point. You click the orb and then you're good on the first orb run. Now, once you do, you will gain that two minute debuff that does prevent you from picking up the next orb. So what you're going to want to do, just head back down to the lower arena and kill as many of the eyeball tentacles as you can. You're also going to see if you're doing this on heroic, there will be a third ad called a blight spreader tendril. Those are your lowest priority. They just spam cast an ability that does light damage. I wouldn't worry, worry too much about those. Make sure you're killing off all Dark Youngs and as many of those eyeball tentacles as you can, since that Torment ability is going to be, that's basically all your damage intake is going to be coming from that Torment ability. So kill off as much as you can. Once your two minute timer wears off, you're going to want to head over to the right platform and do the right orb over there. Same thing, clear as many of the cysts as you, uh, as, as you feel you can, pick up the orb, run as far down as you can, then once you're immobilized, use the Ripple and Tom, the Azurite Essence to get you down to the deposit point. And from there, it repeats until eventually that debuff falls again. You run over to the left for the final time. Same thing, run the orb into the deposit point. And once you do, chances are there will be a shit ton of those eyeball ads in the arena. Once you deposit that third orb, a gigantic yellow beam is just going to delete them all. It's one of the coolest things ever. I absolutely love it. It will never not be cool to me. It'll delete them all, every single ad down there. And guys, to be honest, at that point, congratulations, you pretty much just finished the fight. Now, when the beam does end, finally, after Eon's Gahoon will emerge from his masturbation cave. What show am I referencing? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, you can finally fight the boss. Now, phase two and three guys is pretty much a complete joke. He's going to do a couple things. In phase two, he's going to spawn gray patches on the ground to shoot out orbs. Just don't stand in the gray patches. He's going to root you with a red circle, which spawns an ad. Just cleave down the ad. And most importantly, guys, there's two, well, there's two kind of important things. The most important one is, first of all, do not try and run orbs again. The boss will follow you. And if he follow, follows you on the upper platforms, he will despawn. Don't do that. Now, the second thing is, if you do take too long to kill this boss, his melee attacks, he gives himself a stacking buff every time, every time he successfully melees you. He will, his melee attacks will start hitting like a truck. However, chances are, if you are geared enough to actually run the orbs, unless you're a super mobile class like I have at DH, you are, you probably have the gear to finish the boss off before that ever becomes an issue. Just do want to mention though, if you do take too long in phases two and three, his melee attacks will start hitting like a truck. Anyways, just keep DPSing the boss until you get him to 20%, in which case he will start casting the ability collapse. Just move out of the gigantic circles on the ground. And then when phase three starts, he'll do a couple things. He'll do the pepperoni slices. Don't stand in the pepperonis, easy enough. And probably the most important thing is gaze of Gahoon. Once he starts casting that, you actually want to turn your character so it's facing away from the boss. As if you're looking at the boss when he finishes his cast, you will be feared. So phase three, don't stand the pepperoni. Look away from the boss when he's casting Gaze of Gahoon. Whip your gargantuan hose out and just smack the boss with it and delete him off the face of the earth. Kill the bug. Annihilate him. Congratulations. You beat phase one of Gahoon. Chances are you just beat phases two and three of Gahoon. Now, just some final thoughts on Gahoon before I end the video. While it is technically possible for every single spec to solo this in the game due to the ripple in space as a right essence that lets you move forward. Realistically, guys, I'll be real with you. Let's be honest. Chances are the more, only the more mobile specs are going to be able to solo Gahoon right now. There should be a point in Dragonflight where gear levels, they reach a point where you're able to survive long enough where you could just slowly leapfrog forward with the Ripple and Space Essence. But that is not going to be for a while. And hopefully by then Blizzard will have nerfed this boss. 
I said it with Mithrax, I already said it with Gahoon, I'm gonna say it again guys, especially if you're a more immobile spec, this boss is not worth trying to solo right now, just wait for Blizzard to nerf it, it's, it's awful, you have to go out and get the essence in order to do it, and then the fight itself takes friggin' forever, imagine trying to farm this every single week for a specific piece of transmog, it's, it's not worth it. Wait for, wait for Blizzard to nerf it. And of course, if you found an ability or a strategy that works for you that was not mentioned in this video, please let me know in the comments down below. I will keep track of them and I will test them out for myself. And if it does work, I will pin a comment down below with different strategies or maybe even different abilities that might actually work with the immobilized debuff. However, as far as I can tell what I found, the Ripple and Space Azurite Essence is the only one that does work. So, with all that being said, it's the end of the video. If you followed it the whole way through, first of all, if you did Mithrax and Gahoon, I'm sorry. You probably had a bad time. But that's it. Congratulations, you soloed Normal and Heroic Oldier. By the way, this does also apply to LFR, even though it's not mentioned in the title of the video. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below. Of course, I will do my absolute best to try and answer them. Might not always get to all of them, but I do try my best. And of course, before I end, Halo 3, best Halo. And that's a fact. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Later.